take a look at some different types of chemical reactions. Um, before doing this, we should make sure that we know which our diatomic elements are. Diatomic means two atoms, so it's basically elements that are found as two atoms joined together, and there are seven of them that you should memorize. I like to remember, remember it as Hofbrinkel, H-O-F-B-R-I-N-N-C-L, Hofbrinkel. You could also look at your periodic table and if you're more of a visual person, um, you can see that it makes a 7 on your periodic table, N, O, F, C, L, B, R, and I, and remembering that also hydrogen, because there are 7 total. So you can remember it either as Hofbrinkel or remember it visually, but those 7 elements, Hofbrinkel, H, O, F, B, R, I, N, and C, L, um, are diatomic by themselves, meaning if you find them as single elements in nature, they are two atoms joined together. Why is this important? Because if we're writing a chemical reaction and we're writing these elements by themselves, they're always going to be found with a subscript of two. You will not just see Cl by itself, you'll see Cl2. When it's in a compound, they can have any other subscript depending on how many atoms happen to be in that molecule. Um, so this is only true when they are free elements by themselves. So a synthesis or combination reaction, they're synonyms of each other, is when you are synthesizing or creating or combining to form one product. So there will be one thing only, one formula on the right-hand side, and you may have two or more reactants. So something like this here. Um, you can have coefficients in front, but notice there is only one product made, one formula. Notice that here I have a metal and a nonmetal combining. These are separate elements, and they are combining into an ionic compound. If you are forming an ionic compound made of metal and nonmetal. Make sure that your metal comes first in the formula and make sure that you look up the charges, switch them and make them subscripts so that you're equalizing the charge to form a neutral ionic compound. So let's look at an example. Lithium is combined with nitrogen gas. This is a synthesis or, or a combination reaction. I have two elements combining to form one product. So let's start writing it. Lithium by it is not diatomic, so I would write it as Li by itself, and metals aside from mercury are solid at room temperature. Nitrogen gas, nitrogen is one of my Hofbrinkel, one of my diatomic elements, so I'd write it as N2, and it's telling me it's a gas. Now they are, metal and nonmetal are combining to form an ionic compound. Somewhere in your head or on the side, um, I want to look up what charges lithium and nitrogen form as ions. Li forms a 1 plus charge. Nitrogen forms a 3 minus charge. So remember to make the formula, you're taking the charge of one and making it the subscript of the other. So the 1 is becoming the subscript of nitrogen, the 3 is becoming the subscript of lithium, and my formula becomes Li3n. It makes sense because I would need three 1 plus charges to cancel out a 3 minus charge on the nitrogen, and that's why I would need three lithium ions to cancel out one nitride ion. And this is my formula on my right-hand side. Ionic compounds are solids at room temperature. Now I just need to make sure I am balanced, so don't worry about different subscripts on different sides. We will take care of that with, by adding coefficients. So there's two nitrogens here. I need a two in front to, put, um, to make sure nitrogen is balanced. And now that changes lithium. Lithium, there's um, a three subscript already, so two times three is six. So I need a six in front. This is my balance synthesis reaction. Magnesium is combined with oxygen ga gas. Magnesium I just write Mg by itself because it's not one of my diatomic elements and it's a solid because metals are solid at room temperature aside from mercury. Oxygen is O2. It's one of my diatomic elements. Don't forget that subscript or it's incorrect. When they are forming an ionic compound, um, I, somewhere on the side I just look up their charges and switch them to make subscripts. Now the subscripts might be the same as the subscripts that they have on the left hand side or they might be different. It's completely based on the charges I've looked up. So Mg is 2 plus, O is 2 minus, I switch them, I get Mg2O2, but don't forget to simplify. We always write the empirical formula or the simplest formula for ionic compounds. If you write Mg2O2, it would be wrong. So remember, our ionic compounds are also solid. Notice I'm putting in phases here. It doesn't ask you to, so if you didn't, that's fine. Um, there's two oxygens on the left, so I need two on the right, and now I also have to balance magnesium. So don't forget to balance your reaction. It's incorrect if it's an unbalanced reaction. Here's two more examples to try. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, barium metal reacts with fluorine gas. Barium's monatomic, meaning not diatomic, and fluorine is um, is F2. And somewhere on the side, Ba forms a 2 plus charge. F has a minus charge. When I flip, I get BaF2, and everything's already balanced. The combination reaction that occurs when sodium and oxygen react. 
here's Na, here's O2. Okay, somewhere on the side, look up their charges and switch them. Um, notice here I'm always, um, that in, in the compound I always have to put the metal first. So even if the metal wasn't first on the left-hand side, that doesn't really matter. But in the compound it has to be metal than non-metal. That is the convention. Okay, and then just make sure to balance. A decomposition reaction is the exact opposite of the synthesis reaction. It's when you're taking one reactant, one thing on the left-hand side, and breaking it down into two or more products. A lot of times you might be breaking it down into constituent elements. Other times you might be breaking something larger into just smaller items, uh, smaller products. Okay, so something like this, calcium oxide being broken down into calcium and oxygen. A lot of the times these require heat um, because you're breaking bonds, and breaking bonds is an endothermic reaction. So here, nickel-2 oxide decomposing into its elements. Here I'm starting with the compound, an ionic compound, so in your head or somewhere on the side, get your formula. Ni has a 2 plus charge as indicated by the Roman numeral. Oxide is oxygen with a 2 minus charge, switch, um, that's just saying 2, sorry, switch, and you get NiO because a 2 and a 2 simplify. Um, and then it decomposes into its elements. Ni is an element, just written as Ni. Oxygen's diatomic, and then you just balance. Combustion is another type of reaction. If you see anything about burning, that is indicating a combustion reaction. Um, it's a rapid reaction that uh, involves a, that produces a flame, and it involves using the O2 from the air as an ox as a reactant. So most of the time, we're looking at hydrocarbons. As it sounds, hydro contains hydrogen and carbon, two elements. Um, and a hydrocarbon will react with the O2 from the air in a very known way. It produces CO2, carbon dioxide, and H2O. I don't care which thing comes first as long as those two things are products and these two things are reactants. We can also look at hydrocarbon derivatives, meaning one of the hydrogens is replaced by something else like an oxygen or OH, um, like in an alcohol, and they react in the same kind of way. There's incomplete combustions where you form carbon monoxide instead of CO2, but if, if unless told otherwise, we'll assume that a combustion reaction, if it's a hydrocarbon or hydrocarbon derivative, produces these products. You should memorize this template. As a note, combustion reactions for things that aren't hydrocarbons do not have to release CO2 and H2O. Something like magnesium, when you burn it in air, when you react it with oxygen, it produces its oxide. Um, so this is only true of hydrocarbons and hydrocarbon derivatives. So take a moment, try this example, right? The balanced equation for the reaction that occurs when propane gas is burned in air. Um, and this might be from an error that you need to know what propane was. Propane is C3H8. That would be helpful for you to know. So try reacting the reaction when C3H8, as a gas, is burned in air. So C3H8, my other reactant is going to be O2, and my products are going to be CO2 and H2O. I don't care which one you write first. So now all we have to do is balance. And remember that it would be helpful to leave things that are in multiple formulas on the left and right hand side to the end. So notice oxygen's here and here and here. Save that to the end. Start with something that's in one thing on the left and one thing on the right, like carbon and hydrogen. So carbon, there's three here, so I need a three in front of the CO2. Hydrogen, there's eight here, so I need a four in front of the H2O. So that's my first step, and I just showed it here as um, a separate step here. So that's my first thing to do. Now I can do the oxygens. So let's count the total oxygens on the right. There's three CO2, so that's six, and there's four H2Os plus four, so there's 10 oxygens total on the right. So that means I need 10 oxygens total on the left. There's an O2, so whatever number I put in front is going to be multiplied by two, so that would mean I would put five in front. Five times two is 10. Now I've balanced everything. Take a moment and try the next one. Butane is C4H10. That's something you don't have to know. Um, you used to. Um, so take a moment and try when C4H10 is burned in air. Okay, here we go. C4H10 would react with the O2 in the air. That's my other reactant to produce carbon dioxide and H2O. We'll start by balancing C's and H's. Okay, four CO2s and five H2O's would balance the eight C's and H's. And now we can add up the oxygens on the right. There's four times two. There's eight oxygens here, and there's five, so that's 13 total oxygens on the right-hand side. But what you'll notice is 13's an odd number. I need half of 13 in front here because there's going to be multiplied by 2 in this formula. So whenever you have an odd number, it might be helpful to first write it in as the fraction. I need 13 halves here, 13 over 2. How can I get rid of that over 2? I can multiply every single one of these coefficients by 2 to get rid of that fraction. So 
this would be multiplied by 2, and this, and this, and this. Essentially, it gets rid of that over 2, and it multiplies the other ones by 2. So we get a 2, a 13, an 8, and a 10. So if you have an odd number, just put that number over 2 and multiply all the entire reaction, every coefficient, by 2. Because remember that um, when we balance, we want the smallest whole number ratios. Okay. Write the balance equation for the reaction that occurs when ethanol is burned in air. Ethanol is C2H5OH. I apologize for not writing that in there. C2H5OH. So C2H5OH plus O2 gives me CO2 and H2O would be my template. Let's balance the C's and H's first. There's two C's and six H's total, so I would need two and a three to balance those. Now let's add up the oxygens. There's four here. There's three here. That's a total of seven. Now, at first glance, you might say, oh, seven's an odd number, and we need seven here. Don't forget to check if your reactant has any oxygens in this. This is not a hydrocarbon. It's a hydrocarbon derivative. It's called an, uh, an alcohol because it's an OH group. So I need um, seven total represented on the left-hand side, but I already have one here. So I only need six represented in this section here. So I would just need a three coefficient because three times two is six plus one here gives me seven and that gives me seven oxygens on either side. Okay. Um, again, just as, an ex just as a reminder that you don't have to have a hydrocarbon burning. You can have um, something else burning and they would give you um, what those products are and then you can balance those things too. So just as a heads up about that.